Hey, it's Fishing Sister. We're down here at Formby Bay on the York Peninsula. We've walked about 15 minutes from the car along the cliff top and we've come down quite an easy slope, a sandy slope down onto the beach here. We've come here to catch shark and we've come here with Jared and Nikki who've done this before. We have never experienced shark fishing so we're going to learn something today and Jared has just done his magic on the beach and caught shark. So Jared, tell us what the plan was when we got here. Oh, the plan was um, to get down here a few hours before high tide um, so we can catch some bait, which is what we did. Catch some fresh mullet, some fresh tommies. And uh, as soon as the sun starts to go down, we uh, yeah gear up and uh, send them out. And yeah, I hope that something bites on. <laughs> <Dear>. <laughs> is where you'll get your mullet. Yeah. You'll pick the mullet up there. All right, well, we'll go for that. I'll chuck a bit, or even see see how that's stirring up there. Yeah. You sort of, they won't come into there. They'll, they'll sit behind where the clean water is. Yeah. Because they won't have that go through their gills. Yeah. And so you probably have a whole mullet or something. Yeah, on whole there. mullet on there. Yeah. Whole right. mullet or a whole tommy or whole garfish. Yeah. Whatever you can get. All right. So that's the first job today, is to catch some fish to put yeah. on there. Have a look at it, first time fishing. It, yeah. it, you can't beat fresh fish. No, and you know, yeah. they always say if you use the fish that are caught in the area, yep. it's always the best thing. Yep rather than, yep. you know, anything else, because yep. that's what they'd be feeding on anyway. Yeah, so. exactly right. Seven, eight foot, seven gills. Um, we've had a bronzy, I, he was probably about nine foot, and I got him right up to the beach here and then he snapped me off. Um, but that's the joy. I was sort of impatient as well. Yeah. I sort of tightened the drag right up to, to stop him from running, but where I should have just let him wear himself out a bit more. So is that what you do, like when you feel it on, or when you hear when, it's on? When you, you'll, well I put, put bells on the top of my rod. Right, so and I'll just sit back here and I'll, as soon as I hear the bell rattle, then I'll run over there and I'll just, just fill the rod. And a lot of the time they'll just mouth the hook, right. so they'll mouth the bait and they'll go for a run. And if you were just to try and set the hook straight away, they'll just spit it and then take off. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> That's why I use 80 pound braid and then 100 pound leader that I just swivel off of that main line. So off the main line you'll have the snap swivel that'll come down to your sinker and then you'll have your trace off of that swivel with your gang hooks. Well a mate of mine made these new gang hooks for me on cables and I'm just going to give them a go. Mm, so. Time! <laughs> Finally! So you let them have a run, then you just wind the drag up a little bit, so it's starting to like tighten it up a bit, and they've got to work harder, and then that's when they try and swallow it. Then you just reef as hard as you can and set the hooks, yeah. and uh, then it's on. <laughs> then it's on. And so you, you want them to be a bit worn out before you try and actually get well, them in? normally uh, 20 minutes, half an hour sometimes. Yeah. You just let them go. You just tighten, the, the tighter you put the drag, 
the more they've got to work, the quicker you wear them out. But obviously you've got to realise you're only on 80 pound braid, you know, with 100 pound leader. Yeah. So you sort of got to work with what you've got. Sinker. Yeah, pyramid sinkers seem to use those because they sort of like an anchor out there. Yeah. Hold it out, that'll go, and then that'll come up yep. like that. And then normally they'll just grab it. They'll play with it at the start, and then they'll sort of just mouth the whole thing and take off. And then, yeah, you just tighten them up, and then, yeah, then just set the hooks. All right. And then hang on. See what we can do. All right. So, is this one set up already? Yeah, this one is. I just need the sinker on there. So that's that's what Sorry. we're that's what we're fishing with. So obviously they come off mm. when we can get them off. You wouldn't want to get one of them through your blooming finger, would you? But on the cable there. Yeah. And then straight on the trace, and then straight out. These are a new, um, a new set of hooks that I'm trying out with the cable. Normally, I just have single hooks on a trace. Yeah. But so yeah, we'll try that out. So you get the leader. I do it backwards because I'm left-handed. Yeah. Right. Through. So you come in through the bottom like that. Right. Close it off like that. Pinch it like that. This one here, around seven times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And then finger there, let that one go, right? Yep. And then you cross that line, right? The line you just did, you cross him back over like that. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, right? And then the main thing is that this leader, sorry, not the leader, the braid goes back through the way that you put it through at the start. So back through there like that, right? Yep. So then they're the same, but don't cross them over like I just did. Through there like that, right? So now they're both the same way. And then pull. Yeah, right, look at that. <laughs> and then you just trim it off. And then you just tidy it up with, the, with a pair of scissors. Yep. Like that. Pull that tail back over here like that. Get him. Trim him off like that. Let's see. That there is a perfect. People probably do them different, but that's how. Yeah, well, there's a million different ways. To yeah, do that's how I do it.
expensive retailers. Yeah. How much is it, do you know? No, I have to ask him. Is this what you think? How much is that rig? Probably 15 bucks. Yeah. Down the gurgler. Oh no, plus plus there's about 30 metres a litre. Yeah. No, probably probably 30 bucks. Yeah. Play a tune on that. Yeah, because you're putting a lot of weight on that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bugger. So Jared first off lost one. It um, took his rig. It's a shark. It's a shark. Gone. So Martin, it just beat his hooks off. What? Took the whole. When the line went slack, yeah. and you got to keep the tension on. The line went slack, and that's when he come out the water. And I think when he's come out the water, he sort of done the barrel roll. If you feel the end of that line there, it's like sandpaper. Yeah, right. It um, took his rig. And then he's caught two. The first one, what was the first one? The first one was a seven gill. A seven gill, yeah. yeah. About that 1. would have been. 4. Oh, wow. oh the one we landed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. So that'll go home and uh, we'll eat that one. But normally, any bigger than that, I sort of just let them go. 1. Just get a photo 4. and uh, drag them back out and yeah, see you later. And the second one, I think, what was it, Linda? How it big? was just over two meters, 2.12. Yeah, so that's, yeah, he can just uh, live another day, I suppose. But I've probably caught him once before. So, but no, it's good fun, I love it. So that leader, how long do you make that? About, uh, probably 25 metres, I put on there. So that's a fair bit, why would you put? I've always just, and everyone runs, like, because Instead of running um, leader straight on, like, uh, sorry, braid straight to your swivel and you're loading it all up, I've always ran leader to braid, then straight on to your, yeah. to your setup. It's yeah. just, yeah, easier because I don't, I don't know um, and I don't really rate braid straight off the swivel, where leader, you always have wind on leader, always, no matter what you're doing, you always put wind on leader on. I just think it's it can handle a lot more abrasion than what um, braid can do. Yeah. But especially like yeah, it's all ultimate abrasion resistance. I've just always it's, it's basically tougher. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. different I use single hooks or you can use gang hooks um, and then onto a pyramid sinker so you have a tenno gang hook on your onto a trace always use trace or you get bitten off um, and then I just use have a sinker lower than the hook obviously um, just on 100 pound leader um, all up here all hooked up here on the 100 pound leader down to onto 80 pound braid so, um, yeah, and it's, yeah, and you just, yeah, hope like hell you don't, you don't get bitten off, which this one snapped me off. This was the big, he would have been probably, oh, seven, eight foot. I suppose the yeah. first one that snapped me off. Yeah. <gasps> oh yeah, Jared is on. Jared's here for the shark, and that could be one. <laughs> Oh yeah! <laughs> Jared's on! Oh! <laughs> oh
scared had one on before and it gets all this line and got away. So this time he does not want to leave it. As soon as I scared around on that, right it goes, you hit the side on. Jared, you had a plan and it came together. <laughs> Just want to get the light right. Weapons that... Yeah. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah. Oh, and it's the perfect light. That was really cool. Just turn it around a bit. Yeah, see it. All right, well done. Man, no. No. Mission accomplished. <laughs> oh.
on fire tonight, aren't we? Yeah, let's open his mouth up. He's going to get... He might go for a track. Right. Yeah. These are the only sharks that can reach around and bite their tail, hey? Is that true? Yeah. What, are, what is it? Seven gill. That's how we do it. Off to fight another day. That is an amazing feeling when you let him go. Well done, Jared. Thank you. Amazing. I don't know what that is. I have never had to measure a fish using one of these before. <laughs> what an amazing thing. That was huge, that shark. And uh, really exciting. Everything, your plan, it just worked. It all yeah. came together. Yep. Exactly. Nothing as like planned. when a plan comes together. I know. I know. And just catching those fresh fish just around, you know, as the sun was nearly starting to drop. It yep. just all worked. So the shark's been soaked in milk because that neutralizes the smell. What else does it do, Jared? And the taste of ammonia. Oh, and gets rid of that taste of ammonia. And just okay. equals it all out, levels it all out. We were skinning this last night. It's actually really Where difficult to skin. So I've never really yeah, skinned a big really fish need before. To, uh, keep a knife sharp on the side. Keep a sharp knife. It's just like cutting sandpaper. It's very fitting that we're in front of the shark. All right, so now this is action stations in the kitchen to cook up the shark that um, Jared caught last night. What's this seasoning? So it's a Duca uh, pistachio seasoning. So this is just a store-bought one that we've bought, but you can make your own. Plenty of recipes online. Hmm. It smells fantastic. Right. Yeah. So Seasoning and it sticks. So basically just push it on. And it so there's no egg, no flour. There's no yeah. egg, no flour. Oh, that looks good. And then you just um, sear it in a pan. And then we're going to be serving it with a mango and tomato and cucumber salsa. That sounds fantastic. I can't wait to try it. I've never eaten shark that's fresh like this before. The only, way, only time I've had sharks like in the fish and chip shop, which I'm sure is fresh, but there is nothing like fish that you've just caught the day before. And it's been treated properly so that it's got every chance of being delicious, right? Uh, so basically I'm just going to pan to them and then chuck them in the oven for a few minutes. Yeah. So as soon as it's cooked, you should be able to just touch it and it should flake away. It doesn't take long to cook. Hey man, that's the Oh, look at that salsa. Tell us again what's in that. So, there's just avocado, mango, tomato, and cucumber. So, we're also going to use some of this. This is made by Marion Bay Catering, local caterer. Um, this is the original recipe. We think this one's going to go best with shark. They've also got these other flavours here, which is lemon and garlic and lime and chilli. Yum. And they also do a gluten-free one okay. as well, so which you... is up in the office. Okay. Yeah, you can buy these at the Marion Bay Caravan Park office when you're here. But, you know, this is perfect for when you've pulled in one of those Marion Bay squid. Lovely fresh shark. And what are you doing? I'm just rolling it in the coating. I've never used this before. This is going to be a treat. It's really peppery. It smells fantastic. Can't wait to try it. So we're going to pan fry these. Chuck it in. Obviously you coat it with the mix. Oil your pan and then just put it in and then squeeze some fresh lemon over it once you start getting it to that sizzle point. Alright then. So I think they're good now. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. What? 
That it needs. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. <laughs> Sit there for about three to four minutes and then flip it and do the same thing again to the other side. As soon as you can touch it and it sort of parts in three plates, it's ready. Okay, so three to four minutes each side. Yep, just gauge it by as soon as you get to as that flaking point. But each side? You can do the others. Yeah, I do each. You do each bit? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all four sides. Because it's you. nice thick ones. Oh, have a look at that crack. Mm. You're right. I'm not going to cut it. Making a parcel here. So, so what are we doing here? Basically, we're going to bake it with some fresh tomato and lemon. So you just wrap them in. So that's just a bit of shark. Just the fish. Slice tomato and uh, lemon on top. Yeah, and then salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, right. And then you just pop the sides in. Bring that up like that and basically just roll until you feel that it's not gonna come apart in your hands and it should stay. Um, and then I'm just gonna sit them in a tray and chop them in the oven and forget them about them for about 20 minutes. So they'll steam and basically cook in their own juices and everything and then when you unwrap them you sit them on the plate in the parcel, unwrap them, squeeze some fresh lemon juice over top, dig in. Alright. Can we have a go with some of this? It's been cooked in all its own steam. Mm. And then your paper becomes your plate, essentially. Oh. And you know it's cooked when... Watch this one, you watch it. When you can just pull it apart like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, yeah. Lovely white flaky mm. fish, beautiful. I'm more excited to try this one, I think. Mm. That is mm. beautiful. Non dry. <laughs> you can take the fisherman to the water, but you can't make him eat the fish. Jared can... here doesn't eat seafood, and yet he caught all this wonderful seafood. Potatoes is all I eat. <laughs> it just couldn't be a better night. I've never seen anybody land a fish that big before. It was amazing, and it took a lot of strength. Jared was really. <laughs> You had to have a lot of strength to bring that one in. It's pretty cool. Excellent work. Hope you enjoy this video because it's exactly when a plan comes together and you get the result. It's excellent. Get down to Marion Bay Caravan Park and I'll look after you. <laughs> it's the best place ever. <laughs> best place on the Yorks. Well, I have to say this has been heaps of fun and we're really grateful to Jared and Nikki for bringing us along and showing us how it's done. It's no, thank you, fishing sister. Really appreciate it. This is Fishing Sister saying goodbye.